Hey everybody, Eric here. And today we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop in order to do a couple of things, which is firstly, work with an imported CAD file. But secondly, look at a couple of extensions that are gonna make working with that CAD file a little bit easier. So for any of you that have had to, or just maybe in your day-to-day -day practice, work with CAD files, you know that it really depends on how well they were drafted. Uh, there's always gonna be some work you need to do in SketchUp to get it to work sort of as efficiently or the way you expect it to. Now, I normally say that the best thing you can do is get all your drafting done perfectly in CAD before you import it into SketchUp, but if it's coming from somebody else, like a consultant or even a team member, that may be outside of your hands. So I wanna look at how to sort of import and organize basically an approach to getting started with CAD and then a couple ways to make that process of going from CAD to 3D or 2D to 3D a little bit more efficient. So let's just go ahead and get to it. I've got my finished file here. It's actually not really finished, but it's um, where we're going with this in just a minute, but I wanna start from scratch. So let's just kind of, just so you're starting uh, with me, we're gonna open up a new SketchUp file, a new blank file. And let me pull open a CAD file here that I have, which if I'll just pop this in really quick, just so you can see the process from the very beginning. I'm gonna leave all this stuff here and just kind of default, just leave it all on the way it is. And then close that, looks like everything was okay, that's great. And there it is. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is that, you know, when you start a SketchUp file, you can see I'm in perspective mode. But uh, so it almost makes me, it's almost deceiving me to think I'm ready to start extruding, but I actually want to take a step back and kind of say, let's create maybe a drafting environment that mimics CAD or mirrors CAD until I'm ready to make that transition fully. So let me open up my tags here so I can see what I'm working with. I've got a few, uh, looks like an L prefix, so it came from the landscape architect. And uh, if I just turn some of those off and on, it looks like everything's been organized nicely. So that's great. It's actually a pretty good start. So first thing I want to do is sort of go sort of recreate the CAD drafting environment. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set my standard view to top and I'm going to set it to parallel projection. So now just like in CAD, I'm just sort of drafting straight down. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to turn for this. I'm just going to turn my axis off. I don't have to, but I'm going to. And then I want to change the style. And the reason why is because I don't really know what's been drafted on what tag. Now I could go in and I could select something and open up my entity info and look at that, but that's a little bit time consuming, especially if you have a lot of layers. So yes, we will be doing that, but in just a second, firstly, I wanna see if I can shortcut that process a little bit. And again, just visually tap into some of that information that right now is not showing um, with the way that it was drafted in CAD. So I'm gonna open up my styles and I've got a few options here, but the first thing is uh, there's this thing called color. This is line color. So right now it's gray, uh, it's sort of a dark gray, like I like to use as my default, and they're all the same. So basically it's overriding any edge color. I can come over here and say by material and you can see what happens. So when I go by material, it changes to the same colors that they are in uh, that they came from in CAD. So the road would be yellow and the road center lines would be blue. And now I'm actually seeing the color of the, um, of the line work itself. Now I'm also gonna do this thing and watch and you'll see why in just a minute. I'm also gonna use this color by tag override. And that's for if we create any faces, it's gonna also change the faces to the same color, not just the edges. So I wanna create a new style. Maybe I'll call that CAD or something just so that I know, remember what this is. And then I want to create a scene to save that style. So I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna call this CAD. And I'm gonna uncheck camera location. I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. It's kind of, because this is a working scene. So this isn't like a drafting scene or anything. It's just something that we're working on. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And then the next thing, and I kind of uh, maybe should have done this when I had my styles panel open. But if you have trouble seeing, like I know I'm missing my buildings because they were on a white, they were drawn on white, maybe they shouldn't be. I can change the color if I wanted to and they'll show up. But at the same time, like yellow and light blue might be difficult to see on a white background. I'm gonna come over here, turn my sky off and change my background color to something like a charcoal gray 
or a black, something that you would expect to see in a CAD drafting environment. So I'm going to update that style and there we go. So now I can actually kind of, it kind of feels like I'm still in CAD and that's great. So that was just so that I can see better or faster what I'm working with. Here now I'm going to do what I would normally say, be careful doing, but I'm going to kind of just kind of remind you when you start exploding things, just kind of keep in mind that we're doing this intentionally. So I want to explode everything in that came in and I'll show you why in just a second, because I don't know how this was organized. There were some groups, you know, there's no, com there's no blocks or anything like that. So I need to actually reorganize this. Now, normally I would be really hesitant to have loose geometry all just kind of sticking together and crossing together like this. But with CAD, when this comes in, when your line work comes in from AutoCAD, the actual line work, so the raw geometry is coming in on a, it's tagged. So it's coming in and it's basically the AutoCAD layer is translated to a tag. So it still preserves that. So L site was basically the drafting layer. Now that's good because even though these, these lines may be overlapping, in this case, they retain, the raw geometry retains the information, the layer information. Now I'm gonna use that to my advantage here. I'm gonna select one line. In this case, say select all on the same tag. And I'm going to just make that a group. So you can see that even though if it's crisscrossing stuff or if it's overlapping things, it's okay. I'm only selecting the geometry on that tag. And I'm going to come over here and say, make that a group. So now I know that that's protected. And so if I wanted to go start filling in faces and extruding and moving things, I know that that's safe now. But one thing for those of you that have a good grasp of the fund fundamentals out there, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not kind of following our rule, which is that all uh, geometry inside of a group should remain untagged. So in this case, it's an extra step to go back in. I'm going to select everything using a keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to move all of this from L site onto untagged. So basically I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm only using it to create the group. And then just to make this a little bit easier to see anything that's untagged, maybe I'll make this, um, I don't know, orange. Okay. So there we go. So orange is untagged. That kind of warns me. Now I'm going to put my group onto whether I want to put it onto the L building or whether I want to create a new tag and create one that's called S instead of L site, I might do something like S building because I'm about to make it into 3D. So for me, it's kind of a reminder that the S prefix means that I'm moving from CAD to SketchUp. You don't have to do that. You don't have to add an S if you don't want to, but that's okay. So basically what you can see here is that now, because it's changed color, everything inside the group remains untagged and everything outside of the group now sits on a new SketchUp tag, something that says, I'm ready to go to 3D. Now I would do the same thing with all of these. I'm not gonna do this because it's the same step. I would select all of these on the same tag. I would group them. I'm using a keyboard shortcut to speed the process up. Same thing with the contours. Come over here to a contour. If I can find a contour line, there we go. Select all on the same tag and right click it, make it a group. So same process applies. Now, a short way to do this, if you wanted to not have to go into the group and select all the geometries, you could just come over here and just delete. Once you've grouped everything, like I could just come over to the L contour. I could delete that tag if you don't need it anymore and it'll just assign it to untagged. The nice thing about that is you can see it turned orange. When you delete a group, everything inside of the group, all that raw geometry is untagged. It's a bit of a shortcut. So either way, however you like to do it. Now let's move on to the second part of this. Now that I've got this organized here, I want to start making some faces. So for this, I'm going to turn, let's say, I'm going to go ahead and hide my contours just for a minute because they're untagged. Otherwise I have to put a, create a new tag for them. And I want to come in here and I want to make faces for my buildings. Now, if your geometry is really good and your lines are all closed and everything's perfect, then I should just be able to draw a line along the edge here and it'll automatically fill the face in. So that's great. But if you've worked with CAD at home, most of you know that it's not that simple. Like when I have my um, hidden, I might have these contours and when you're drafting, it's really easy. I'll give you an example. If I switch over to my elevation view, you can see that my contours and, and my buildings and everything is actually sitting in 3D space. 
So contours usually come in from an engineer or something in 3D space. So in this case, it would actually be really easy to accidentally snap a line and have the O snap to um, a contour. So in this case, I would want to maybe double check. I would want to go in and double check first. So while I'm in here, there's two extensions that I'm going to show you. It's going to help with filling in faces when you work with CAD. First one is going to be, both of them are actually by Enroth, for those of you that know Enroth's great extensions. The first one's called Flatten to Plane. So what Flatten to Plane is going to do, it's going to take everything that may be up at an elevation and bring it back down to the same elevation. So what's really cool about that is if for some reason, I'll give you a better example. If I maybe accidentally had a line here and if I looked at it, you can see how that line maybe accidentally snapped to a contour. Well, in plan view, I have no idea. It looks perfect. But when I go to fill this face in, it's not going to fill in. It's just, I don't know why. Okay, that's okay, but it's not, it's not filling in. And the reason why is because it snapped to a contour or something like that. So when I select this, and I'm going to do this one more time, extensions, enter auth, flatten the plane, and watch that line right there. There it is. Bam, it's down. So now that I've done that, now that I've flattened everything, it should be pretty easy to select everything and use Enroth's second extension called Face Creator. So I'm going to click Face Creator, and there it is. OK. Now that's basically the entire process here. So I, I, I've got my tags sort of cleaned up, regrouped, and reassigned. I've flattened all my geometry, and I've gone in and I've made faces automatically using extension. So the last thing I want to do before I wrap up is I want to switch back to my default style over here. I've got a default style. Maybe I'll turn the axis off, turn that off, and add a scene. Maybe call that default. I'm not sure I can call that SketchUp. I can call that whatever I want, drafting, working. So what's cool about this here is that I can switch back and forth as I'm working. I can kind of go back and forth and see my CAD view and make sure everything stays organized and it's on the right tags. And then I can switch back to my SketchUp view. And depending on whether um, I want to see my faces in SketchUp mode or not, I can also just change the background color, make that maybe just a little bit darker. And there you go. So now it's really easy for me to come in and see what's been cleaned up, what's been done, what has faces, and what is ready to extrude. In this case, in this case, it's really easy now for me just to pull these buildings up and just move on to the next piece in my puzzle. So I know that was a lot to cover in a short amount of time, but actually there's a lot more to say about working with CAD files. In fact, this is probably a good time for me to plug our course on SketchUp Campus. So it's right here over my shoulder. If you go to learn.sketchup.com, you can enroll for free and you can check out here three ways to boost your CAD to SketchUp workflow. So some of the tips that I covered, we'll do that a little bit more slowly. You'll get the exercise files to follow along with and you'll get a whole bunch more information. So check that out. And uh, before you leave here, though, make sure to give us a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't done already. Let me know what you think. Uh, these comments kind of help us make these videos better for you. So if you learned at least one new thing today, that's great. Let me know and I'll say thank you and see you next time.